the senior heavy class, effectively a grid of senior Rotax carts with the heavier drivers. Andy Weaver there is your championship leader and here are the grid positions, Jake. Well, just like Rathbone earlier, Weaver is going off P8. It's Christus Lykins on pole from Sam Stewart, then Lawrence Hilton and Roger Moore, not that one, William Dransfield and Ryan Walker, then Hadfield and Weaver, Millwood and Lambert rounding up the top ten. Peter Abbott and Mike Bilton from Sam Booth, Randolph Kreese and David Blackhurst to round out the 15-car field. But Christus Lykins coming up of the final turn should hopefully get us off the starter's orders. It's a bit uneven, but away we go. He's won both of the earlier heats, Lykins, and into the first corner. Is that going to be a move through from Lawrence Hilton to get into second position? Just about. It was a bit tricky, but he managed to get there. Now, you're already seeing the pace that Lykins has got. He's won the earlier two heats, and he'll win this if they allow him to get away, that's for sure. We're on board here with Peter Abbott. Great pictures. Oh, a couple of drivers running wide there. That's Andy Weaver losing ground. He's got to give him the space to come back in on the inside. So Weaver does recover, and so too does the 47 of Hadfield. So Hadfield gets through back into position anyway. This is a very frenetic opening lap, but you've got to give each other space. Otherwise, you're just going to end up in the barriers anyway. Lycans, Stewart is back to second, is he? In front of Lawrence Hilton. No, not quite. There's been a slight pause in the timing screen, but that is definitely the number one car in second place still, Lawrence Hilton. Once the timing screen catches up, it'll correct itself, and Hilton will be there in P2. Yep, the timing is slightly behind. Oh, slight exit. Uh, the, the problem there on the exit, that's Hadfield. He drifted a little bit wide, and as a result, we've made up two places. So that was a bit of an issue there. Hadfield collecting his rival, but Christus Lykens has no issues up front. He's cantering up the road. Jake, can I just say, if you're a werewolf, why would you use the name Lycans because clearly he is a werewolf hopefully there's no full moves coming up at Hooter Park otherwise there will be all sorts of carnage going in uh, going on in and the have you, have you been reading your Twilight Saga again I absolutely. keep telling you not to absolutely <laughs> should he call himself Christopher Smith or something <laughs> Lycans is out in front then there you go the timing screen has come back to us Hilton is second from Stuart Dransfield and James Bond. Oh, sorry, Roger Moore in uh, fifth position. I thought it was Simon Templer. <laughs> oh, my goodness, now you are making a reference. Oh, yes. Down the main straight, then here we go. Up into the first corner. Simon Templer, of course, was a racing driver once. Well, I've seen that episode as well. Into the first corner, a great battle for position. Likens, Hilton, Stuart, Dransfield and more. Then it's Walker, Milward and Mark Lambert. Can I just say, Roger Moore there in uh, fifth place currently, he has never heard those jokes before, Jake. No. Never. Never. This never. is the first time he will ever have yeah. heard anybody. We're, it's a world first yeah. here at Hooton Park and for the uh, Taddy I Samson commentary team. Exactly. Sorry, Samson Taddy I <laughs> commentary team. He'll be baffled that James Bond is even mentioned in his same line. Mark. Can't believe it. <laughs> Walker in P6 behind him, though. Then Millwood, Lambert, Abbott, Hadfield, and Booth. Andy Weaver all the way down in P12. That's how tricky a race start he has had. The championship leader outside the top 10. It's so easily done in these opening couple of laps. And now he's going to have to try and fight his way back. Meanwhile, we watch Dransfield and Moore as they duel away for fourth position. Fastest lap to Lawrence Hilton in second. So he is closing the werewolf. But will he get there? That's the question. What's also interesting to note is that those two are significantly quicker than everybody else. 36 threes for them. Nobody else can even match them at the moment. 36 fives, sevens, eights. On board with Abbott. He's on his own through turn one. Well, he was. There goes Hadfield. Makes his way through on the inside. Oh, and he's not the only one. Weaver finally gets his way through. And no wonder, because this is the day he could seal the championship, but only if he gets the requisite points. So he's got to try and make a bit of a comeback in this one. It's Lykins, Hilton, Stewart. Dransfield, Roger Moore, Ryan Walker, Dan Millwood and Mark Lambert. Abbott is ninth and Hatfield's 10th, but Weaver down in 12th can seal the championship today. He's got to make a bit of a comeback, and this is not going to be easy. So we're watching Dransfield, Moore and Walker. We're on board with Abbott. There is Andy Weaver, and he's making his bid on Hatfield up the inside into turn one. Lovely jubbly, and the door's left wide open by Hatfield. Peter Abbott picks up the spoil, says, thank you very much, mate. I'll move up into position as well. So Weaver definitely on the charge and looking likely to get into that top 10 that he needs to wrap it up here at Hooton Park today. But the battle of a second is going to be very tight. 
because it looks as though Stewart is going to be level on points for second. He needs to get up to second place to change that. Here we go again. It's Vikings out front. Hilton in second place. Stewart now has the fastest lap, and he's gone sub 36. So the pace is coming to them now around the course on lap seven. And Sam Stewart still fences his chances there on Lawrence Hilton. But Hilton is not really going to give him any space. I'm, I'm actually very impressed they've kept Lycans as honest as they have throughout the course of this one. Lycans is still a good one and a half seconds up the road, but he's not getting any further ahead. Stewart is hustling here as they go through the final couple of corners of the lap. And into lap number eight they will go this time by. But still Stewart hustling Lawrence Hilton, looking for his beard, and Hilton just sliding the cart in, that's proper four-wheel drift mode going through turn one. Setting purple is Sam Stewart now, Jake. He's now the fastest man on the track. Doesn't have track position, but he's the fastest man on the track, the only man in the 35s. And as a result of closing up to the number one, all he needs is a whiff of a gap, just the slightest hint that he can stick the front fairing of his car up the inside. And this is senior heavy. They're not going to dilly-dally, they're going to go for it. Oh, they always do, don't they, in this class. They're not messing around, that's for sure. And Stewart will know he's got the pace. He won't know necessarily that he's got the fastest lap at the moment, but he'll feel him getting closer to the cart in front. So uh, Lawrence Hilton is about to get some company. Well, that's the thing about senior heavy class karting. These are no nonsense, no holds barred, fearless races, and it doesn't matter whether this is club level or national level, as far as these guys are concerned, this is their Formula One. They're a couple of millimetres off the ground, they're taking their punishments over the kerbs, the ribs are starting to scream at them. You get that feeling, that vibration, that tough rhythm through the apexes, they're giving everything they've got. Yeah, and these guys do it for fun, Jake. They're doing it because they enjoy it, they've got no pretensions about racing touring cars or any other car, frankly. They're here racing carts, and I know people say, oh, it's, you know, it's so expensive. It is. No more. No motorsport is cheap, but this is a lot cheaper than racing cars. Believe Absolutely. me. There are people that come out of cars and say, "Oh, I'm going to go and race cars because it's cheaper." Believe me, no, it's I've not. Got both. <laughs> it's not. Well, this is the thing, and you've got to remember as well that for the experience of driving. The only form of motorsport that Formula One drivers do on their day off, the only one they're allowed to do, is karting. karting. They yeah. come back to it, and there yeah. is a reason for that. Last lap, and Lawrence Hilton still trying to hang on in front of Sam Stewart. Dransfield in P4. Roger Moore is slipping into the clutches of the new fastest man on track. Ryan Walker, Walker. bangs in at yeah. 35.8 right to the end of the race there to eclipse the time set by Sam Stewart. But this is the problem. You've got daylight between each other. You're just waiting for the mistake. And these guys are too good. They're not going to drop it on the last lap. They know exactly what they can do. They know every inch of this racetrack now. And Christos Likens is going to come out of the final turn. He's lost about half a second to Hilton in the closing stages. But he didn't need to panic. The checkered flag flies. And Christos Likens wraps up the race in front of Hilton, Stewart, Transfield and Roger Moore. But look back. Where is Andy Weaver? He's in ninth position as he comes through, and he knows that's good enough. That's good enough to win the championship for Andy Weaver. He knows it as well. He worked the points out beforehand, and he is the 2022 champion. He's actually inheriting eighth position at the end of the race there after penalties are taken into account. So Likens from Hilton, Stewart and Dransfield, Moore is fifth position in front of Millward, Lambert, Weaver and Ryan Walker, with Peter Abbott demoted to B10. And here is the confirmation then in the Hooton Park IndyCar Series in heavy. Andy Weaver cannot be caught. The battle now is between Sam Stewart and Mark Lambert, with Christos Lykens hoping to pick up one more race victory in the finale in November before the end of the year is out. There's one race to go here, and it's the Standing Start Boys. It's the Pro Karts.